like is there any blocker in your site just in completing the the interim report what's required so just update us but in particular if you just want to start make it quick just you tell us what have you done uh, and what is what you plan to do today and then you know any blocker um, for your progress but anything around your feeling how you kind of any challenge yeah you can also use it to update it so great so let's start with that and any outstanding issues also you want to raise please just raise them if they are something quick we will answer them here if not we will be uh, deferring it to the slack communication daisy thank you go on um good morning everyone i hope you can hear me yes we do hear you clearly morning yeah, great. So, uh, about how I'm feeling, I'm feeling quite optimistic. I was able to look through the data, um, clean it, um, and also last night I was just looking through the data. It's just interesting how I was thinking al along the lines of maybe what more I could do with the data in terms of feature engineering to see maybe they can try derive um, like location data from the data sets. Um, but I got feedback from Binyam that maybe that will not be um, relevant. So I've been able to do most of task one and I intend to finish the rest of that today. Hopefully I'll be in time, hopefully I'll be on track with regard to like today's submission. Wonderful, thanks. Oh, and Very happy nice birthday to, hear that. to Tala, yeah i i missed that one whose birthday is today um, stella's okay stella happy birthday um sorry i missed that okay so next is Yudidia. Uh, okay hello everyone uh hello. so for the uh, for the past days, I've been working mostly on uh, exploring the data, understanding the data that I have, and as well as pre-processing the data. Uh, I was using mostly visualization to understand more about the data. Uh, the challenge that I was facing, especially yesterday, was uh, when I was trying to identify the outliers, uh, I was having problem because there are uh, lots of columns in my data set, and uh, I wasn't uh, exactly sure uh, if I have to maybe pre-process the data or extract the features or maybe reduce the dimensions of my data before uh, trying to understand if there are outliers in each and every column or maybe just put all the visualization of the outliers for every column. I've been trying to figure that out and I, I hope to finish that up by today as well as the interim submissions and as other assignment tasks. Great, thanks, Lydia. Yeah, in terms of outliers, there are visual inspections, right? But then there are also clustering techniques that one can use to, to see if there are outliers. And also by looking actually at the, the kind of the distribution and looking at, um, you know, wh what kind of distribution it is, and then within that distribution, you know, what are the, the kind of the three sigma or the kind of the percentile elements and then if the person the difference between the percentile the you know the the numbers are kind of going down smoothly or there are just only a few points that are quite separate so there are this kind of techniques not only just a visual inspection for outliers so you may try to just look at at least the kind of you know the smoothness or there are techniques but i would say yeah try in whichever way you can but consider right. also that there are outlier detection techniques um, okay uh, so do we use those techniques for every column and for example if you have a data set for now i think it's about 50 columns but yeah. uh, if you have some more columns maybe 100 columns in an in an unclean data do we yeah. use those techniques for each and every column or um probably not but the the, the, the important part becomes like do you need all the columns for your interest right so the first thing comes with actually just the missing values like what is like which columns are 
are it, uh, more data. Like if there is, for example, a column that has a lot of missing value, sometimes you may not, you may drop it. Sometimes you look at the correlation and you say like, okay, I might get a lot of information from this column, so I might merge them. So usually you do some kind of aggregation or reduction, and then you do some kind of inspection. But just if you want to see like a quick way, then other techniques, just a column by column, just like outliers. But usually when you do this kind of analysis, one part is for you to learn the techniques and the other part is to actually for it to be relevant. For it to be relevant, usually you don't, you know, the order is not the most important. The, the, the point becomes there is a target variable and then there is, or, or the, the kind of the business need equation, and then there is the data or other features. And you try to see like, if even a column is important in that sense um, and stuff. So it's like the orders are slightly within themselves cyclical. Um, so you, you may not need sometimes to do for all of them outlier detection, for all of them this and that, but uh, it will be like based on the need. If you need that, that data or if you think this is important for the target variable, you, you probably will do some outlier detection as well on that column. But I think for now, what is important is just that for you to learn also the techniques sometimes, just how am I going to detect if I have n number of columns, how can I quickly see you know which column has more feature like uh, outliers but it's not also a column by column because this is a dimension right it's x y z mm. so in a way that you probably want outliers also as within the whole court system so which means mm. like it's not one by one but it may be one point may not be an outlier in one dimension but a combination of them might be an outlier uh, comparatively so visualizations reduction techniques and some kind of TSNE or some other visualization, like for example, just PCA or other things like the autoencoder, uh, encoded, mm. um, whatever will help you sometimes to visualize at a lower dimension. Again, all this is much more of like, again, what I'm saying is that there's one for the delivery, whatever, and there is another for sometimes to think about, you know, what is more important is to help this investor to understand whether something of what you are asked like from this different analysis perspective to make decision so those two are different so you need to learn more techniques to be able to help so i think learning them is good at the same time thinking about the business need is also good so it's a balanced okay. act that you're doing okay okay thank you thanks martin all right uh, good morning yes morning. uh <clears throat> Yeah, for me, I think I've had a good experience uh, so far. I've had a good experience so far working with the data and uh, the data was uh, quite uh, uh, intensive. So uh, there was that uh, concept about pipelines. Uh, when I learned about it, I, I really enjoyed uh, working with the data because there's a way it really makes uh, it uh, to run very quickly and to be able to do the analysis in good time. Uh, also, another thing is the PCA analysis. Uh, the PCA analysis is also a very good uh, dimensionality reduction technique. And when I yesterday when using it, I tried to go through the document that uh, you had shared uh, for um, over there in the in, in that document, and uh, it was quite deep. Uh, it was it was actually quite deep because that one was like uh, manipulating the elements from scratch to some extent. So I tried to check out like other ways I could be able to also uh, manipulate it. Uh, I found there was this uh, the the PCA the PCA method in the SKLAN uh, library and it was very handy. So basically that was what I was uh, working on yesterday. And uh, I hope uh, by the time today we'll be ending, uh, I'll be able to do all the interims in all the submissions in time and to have uh, to be able to complete. Uh, have a nice time, everybody, and thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, sometimes it's like it's for understanding some references. So definitely for implementation, like it has most of or if not all the required uh, modules so you can use them we will also introduce over time like other type of library like the spark library ml library which has also other like it's also i think 
in terms of understanding, sometimes you may need to look at certain references, but from implementation perspective, always yeah, using Scikit or you know, Spark ML and all others will be useful. Great. Michael, Michael Thunder. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we do hear you. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Yeah, uh, yesterday was somehow it's, it was a good day. I was I was I was able to uh, to know some new concepts. Yeah, I'm somehow a newbie to this uh, the data engineering part. And just I was I was uh, the, the tutors were helping us a lot. I just I, I understand what they said and just I went to YouTube. I just searched something and. Uh, one of my friends that I got from Ten Academy, that was Matilda. I was working with her, and we were doing good. That was something nice that I did yesterday. And the blockers that I was having both yesterday and day before yesterday was yesterday there was somehow a uh, power shortage, and I was having difficulty. And day before was yesterday we were celebrating a there was there was a holiday around our village so i was not uh, that much concentrated on my project it was it was yesterday that i started the data exploration the data understanding the preparation and also the analyzing hopefully i'll finish everything today and yeah that's all at last i would, I would like to say happy birthday to stella wish you all the best thank you Okay. Please go ahead. Perfect. Thank you, Hersta. So, hi everyone. I I hope you are all doing good. Um, so, first of all, happy birthday, Stella. So, and wish you all the best in your career, in your life. And yeah, so my updates for today, as yesterday it was a little bit in, so my vibes were a little bit low. I mean, they just somehow down. And uh, I felt like uh, there are so much work and I don't know how to start. But as soon as I started to talk yesterday, as I just, in the stand up yesterday, I felt like there are so many people are willing to help, like really they are willing to help by all of what they can. And I thought, why I just didn't do that from the beginning? So I'm here trying to just encourage everyone who is not able, uh, who is not able to speak loud or who is not um, feeling comfortable of sharing what they are thinking, their fear, their fears, just to speak up. Because no matter what your point is, I mean, because I thought that I am just in a very far point and I wouldn't really find someone to just take me through all of that. But no matter what, what in which point you are, just to speak up because you'll find out there are so, so many people here just willing to help by all of what they can. And uh, 
you know, just after the stand-up yesterday, I felt like in the very beginning, I felt like a little bad about me just speaking, but uh, sooner I found that it was the best thing to do because after that, I just could go through. I am yet, uh, I didn't yet finish everything, of course, and I'm still in the cleaning of data, but I feel like I am, I'm okay, I'm doing better now and I'm processing. So yeah, that's my update for today. Thanks. Exciting. Thank you, Rafa. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, like, I can, but... yeah, just thanks. Thanks for taking over. Yeah, if uh, internet going down again, you'll take over. Thanks. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I heard what Rafa is saying. I think it's great. Discovering that in the early weeks is very important because then it will help you for the for the whole time. And within the same line also, what I want to say is that please speak up. The people who haven't been talking if you haven't been talking for the three days the last three days there's something uh, you know then you have to ask yourself why why are you not just trying it you know, it's, you know update your um your story it is nothing got to do with like because you, you know someone has a story to tell and the other one doesn't have a story to tell. everybody's just about like raising your hand and sometimes just like yeah great i have done this it's just being able to do that sometimes this is just all you need and we sometimes even tell previous batches for example when they go when they are working at work we give them just questions to ask just even write some questions say like uh okay you know i understand your uh, what you, what it is said but could for example could you explain this it's maybe a generic thing but at least it really helps to be able to just say something people notice you that you exist you are there because it's a work environment it, it it is not like if you are behind people just forget you in some way and then forget you means they assume you haven't done much you know, even if you have been doing a lot so you know we just practice it just you know if you have seen it yourself for three days you didn't talk uh, you didn't update you know raise your hand and update um, so great Abel. hello guys can you hear me Yes, we hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just want to update. Uh, it's been a quite uh, three days. Uh, I use Monday for understanding the data. Uh, I was working on a new univariant and bivariant analysis, and managed to come up with an insight on the on the graphs distributions. Something I faced is that uh, working working on scatter plot analysis and choosing. How many samples should I use to continue? I used only 100 samples with some conditional statements, uh, and but uh, I'm afraid it will cloud my insights. Or is there another way to sample from a population to make a decision? Um, so you mean for visualization or for? For a univariant analysis, for yeah. bivariant analysis. Yeah, I mean, in a way, you you could look, you know, these days, if you look at, uh, there are different techniques, you can use density estimators, right? So density estimators would tell you, would give you much more like, they would model your data and plot even contours for that instead of you just doing it point by point. But also, if you use uh, Plotly or Bokeh, you will then be able to even millions of points you can actually uh, display easily. It shouldn't be you to sample. It should be the tool that you use sh should sample. And mm -hmm. if Matt, if you are using Matplotly, whatever, maybe just change it. I think Seaborn, yeah, and, Seaborn. yeah, Plotly and Bokeh, all of them have a certain you know ability to give you through sort of density or estimate the density and plot. So it's cool, you know find it, it's a kernel uh, estimators kind of, um, so I think you shouldn't sample it. You should be able to visualize all of them. Either we, in a form, an accelerated form that these tools will give you or uh, in a density estimation sense, because I think sampling yourself just by as uh, the insight. Okay, okay, thank you. Great, yeah. Okay, um, 
that's great. I think we are, I'm happy to hear everyone is doing, doing well. Um, so Stella, given ra raising your hand, just also happy birthday again, and then just update us. Good morning. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you all for uh, your warm wishes. Um, I'm really happy to be celebrating my birthday with you guys. Um, yesterday uh, and Monday, I was working on um, basically cleaning and understanding the, the data. And uh, today, I'm planning to work on my report and um, also um, also be able to visualize um, some of the parameters and also um, uh, work on testing. Yeah, thank you. Great, thanks. Um, if anyone also, if you have blockers, you know, just you can let us know. But uh, with Hadessa. Okay, good morning. Morning. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I am doing on yesterday, I'm doing on the task one and the task two, and uh, also I proceed to the rest of the tasks. Just uh, they are uh, almost familiar when you do task one, if uh, someone is not doing on that. Uh, if you do task one, uh, it is easy to follow that that procedure to solve the others also. Uh, just uh, as uh, on our daily stand-up, as we have talked on Monday, as Dr. Yab said, uh, it is sometimes difficult to understand the data. Uh, whenever uh, you code, just you may be best at uh, the technical way at coding, but understanding the data is very important. But as a uh, evening, I only be, uh, work on coding just by following the task procedures. Today, what I will going to do is just to report those codes and uh, to understand the different plotting systems, what they, what insights they give, how do I summarize the data, how do I uh, report my implementation is uh, the, my future work. And I will do all that one. And uh, uh, on, uh, I have one question, if it is possible, on on uh, <coughs> carer uh, peer mentoring task. On peer mentoring task, uh, we have assigned uh, a member, but uh, is it it should be on Slack for as a communication medium? What communication medium we will use to talk and uh, to take action on, to perform on that task? Uh, to communicate with a member, just to communicate with my peer. How do I communicate? It should it should be public, or uh, could I use another alternatives like email, Google Meet, and so on thing to communicate with them at at the first? Because it sometimes uh, there is a code of conduct in this academy in a way that you communicate people. So thank you. Thanks. Um, I think in Mary, like, could you do you want to say something on that? I mean, in principle, that this is like, I think as far as I'm aware, in this case, it's about you guys just uh, talking and helping each other. So whether it's not supposed to be public, you like to communicate in public it's fine but i think it's supposed to be um helping each other so if you if it's a, it can be a direct message google meet email i think it's i don't think we specify what medium that you should use i think we are most of the time we only specify things if we think it has a certain way either we want to evaluate it in such a way that um this this is relevant in terms of our measurement, but at the time, some of the things like the carry mentoring is a lot more of between the two of you um, that has to support each other. And definitely have to do a report, but in principle, there aren't uh, much more strict guidelines on that 
but maybe Mary, Mary's, um, I see her mic is up, so do you want to add on that? Sure, I have a problem. Okay, so uh, basically with regards to the code of conduct, it's, it's to help us to, yes, um, uh, engage with one another, but with specific boundaries in terms of, yes, we want uh, you guys to be friends and all that, but in a very professional manner. So uh, there's no specific strict as, uh, strictness, as you say, a yebabal in terms of like um, communicating via DMs, but just make sure that um, how you would want people to communicate to you, you make sure that's how you communicate to others. Uh, make sure the boundaries are within the professional means so that you can make use of the, um, of the platforms in a very professional manner. With, with, um, and um, yeah, I think that's, that's where the code of conduct binds us to basically a commitment that whatever it is, however it is, you communicate uh, to, your, uh, to your fellow trainee, even the intent itself, it's within the boundary, uh, the professional boundaries. Yeah. Great. Thanks for clarifying, Mary. Thanks. So, Nardos. Uh, so, hey, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yes, so, we can hear you. Uh, okay. So, Monday, I've been mostly trying to understand the use case and trying to understand and digest the challenge. And so most of Monday was spent on that. And after that, uh, I've been working on the data exploration and trying to do the user overview analysis. And it's been, yesterday has been very productive. So I can say I, I did more yesterday and today I'm working on the visualization and making interpretation based on the insights. Uh, so the community has been helping a lot and I guess it's going good so far. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Aiden. Aiden Anderson. I know now you didn't put your hands, but I have to just like call randomly sometimes. Aiden, if, you, if your mic works. Uh, okay, great. Uh, you, you can. Sidoina? If I mispronounce your name, sorry. Okay, good morning. Morning. Okay, uh, I'll talk about yesterday, uh, what I tried to achieve. So, yesterday I proceeded with the data preprocessing and I tried to write some function to to make the PC. So uh, today I will try to end the, the slide we should submit in the night. So it's the point where I am actually. Great. So other than that, everything is going good. Uh, yes, somehow, but I have a little concern. Uh, yeah. In the in the file uh, uh, for the directive, for the imputation of the, the missing value, they talk about the imputation with the mean. So should we use the, the mean or if the data is queued, can we use the median or we should follow the, the directive in the file? No, I think, I think trying both, it's a, it's a very good important point, right? If a mean is only makes sense if the distribution is Gaussian or close to Gaussian. If it is highly skewed, then median usually makes sense. But also there may be other elements, right? It's kind of missing values are, uh, you could also model them based on modeling the data, like just using random forest or some other thing. But I would say trying and seeing the change. There is one thing everyone should be aware is that missing value when you meet, when you feel it, it's fake. That means you never, never be able to, to be as good as the reality. So there's no correct way to do it. There's only a better way to do it. 
And then the only way to know if it's better is to, to see if the result is sensitive by it. If the result becomes sensitive, like you have so improved your model based on your missing value treatment, then you are making something wrong, like because it shouldn't be. It should just be, most of the time, it should be only facilitating a certain analysis, but not change the result dramatically. And so testing different, because if you now feel mean values, if, and if it's not the Gaussian, the data is not Gaussian, it might change a lot your, your, your result. So that's why we say then, okay, mean in that sense is not, is not good. Because what does it mean? Mean, mean is just saying the most common value, right? If it's Gaussian, and if, if you find now something missing, it most likely is in the most common, it, it comes from the most common, not definitely from the unique element, right? So that's what it means. Median is the same way. So I would say the best way is just to check if your result has changed because you have used a certain missing value treatment. So yeah, try median, try all that, and and comment on how the result or your perception, your, your visualization, whatever has changed because of that. If it is not, then it's okay. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Yes, thanks. Okay. Um, then I would say uh, Sam Rawit, Sam Rawit Ayello. If you can talk. Okay. Uh, Jonas, Jonas Tatesen. So most people's when I call you just usually it doesn't mean that you have raised your hand. I'm just asking you to update. Okay, design. Time we also unable to hear you, or that only so I could hear the line. Is like if everyone's hearing, please just let me know. Ever standards, just uh, so from my side. Okay, but the hand you couldn't hear, right? Because I see his mic was on, but. Okay, then Matilda. Yes, yeah, Ibabel. Um, good yeah, morning. Guys. Just tell us. Yeah. Morning. Um, okay, so an update of where what I've done and where I'm at. So um, currently, I have been able to clean all my data, and I have done the subtasks for task one. I am now on task 1.1, .1, still trying to find the aggregate user info for the applications. And so far, it's been, it's been nice exploring the data. A few blockers here and there, but I've been getting help from my peers. Yeah, so I'm grateful. Thank you. Hello. Ah, 
I was mute, sorry. I I was calling names. Uh, thanks, Matilda. Uh, Olufemi. Olufemi, Victor. I'm sorry, you called my name? Yes. So just so that you can update us on your... Okay. Um, on what I've done so far? Yeah. All right. Um, yes. Okay. Um, what I've been able to do, um, I've been able to um, clean the data. I noticed that uh, not, uh, the data is quite um, okay in a way. And there are some columns that has um, some outliers. So I use um, quarter range to um, pick the outliers. And then um, uh, I did um, the pre-task. Uh, firstly, what I did was just to write my, uh, to make my code modular and to make my code very clean. So I created, I uh, used um, PyCharm to write a script for uh, all the functions that I'm going to be using uh, for assigning, for fixing outliers, um, for aggregating, for doing um, standard uh, normalization, for doing PCA, I created all the functions. Like uh, I created a method uh, of the class, so I named the class ADA. So from there, I was able to use it, and um, I've been I'm done with um, task one. Just for me to um, go with the slide um, uh, today and to get my slide done in order to submit. So that's what I actually want to do today. Jonas, can you hear me? Hello, anyone hearing me? Can hear you. Can hear you. Jonas, yeah, I see. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, can. I can hear you. I, I was seeing Jonas' hands was on, so I wanted to see if there's has something to add or to say. So I will see if, if no one was also ha having uh, a question or additional ideas, you can probably wrap up the, the call so you can focus on your other things. Hello. Yes, Tadesh. Could I ask another question till them come back? No problem. Okay. Uh, are you going to give us uh, some tutor on which help us on modeling and the dashboard development for this term? So did you say about the, the tutorial session today? No, no, I'm saying just uh, on the feature that maybe today or uh, tomorrow, are you going to give us or some tutor on data modeling issues or uh, do we use the last one? Uh, Desmond, do you have something to add on that? Um, so, so there's going to be a tutorial today in uh, the afternoon from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. UTC. So it will be on data modeling. Oh, okay, I got it, I got it, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Desmond and also Tadese. Let's see if, if anyone also have having a question. So let's wrap up the call. So it looks like uh, no one. So wish you a good day, everyone. So 
is the end of today's standard. Uh, please keep asking questions to, to Strath and also um, please attend the sessions on time, either stand up on time or tutorial on time, and also be very supportive to each other. Cheers.